The Belize Diaspora Summit is fast approaching and this is episode 2 coming your way. XTV is the home, of course, of the coverage of the Belize Diaspora Summit 2024. First of its kind, a historic event, and it comes up June 19th to June 22nd. And of course, we are excited, but we also know that some of you might not know what the heck is the Belize Diaspora Summit. You might want to know what it's about, who's having it, and why they're doing so. So, we have these preview shows. We try to keep it short. I'm most hired, by the way, from XTV, and we have been interviewing folks to get you up to date on what is going to take place. One of the first things we need you to know is that while this is a historic event and why we're excited about it, this is not a how we come up just the other day event. The folks in the diaspora have been plotting and have been organizing and this started all the way back from the early 80s. We can trace the fingerprints of the late Dr. Eddie Leng. We can trace it to Philip Coulson. We can trace it to the Consortium Belize. And here to tell us more about that, we have well-known activists from the Los Angeles community, journalists, and of course, our good friend, Bilal Morris from Neighbor String Connections to tell us a bit more on that. The Belize Diaspora Summit uh, is a very, very important uh, conference and a sort of a reunion of Belizeans across the diaspora and at home in coming together in what Bertoka used to call the homecoming conference and what before Bertoka, Philip Golson used to also talk about that Belizeans at home and abroad need to come together and help develop Belize. Um, it is such a very important step, most that that is taken now where you are trying to, and all the other parties that are involved, are trying to make sense out of this thing because it's like a 30-year uh, struggle that I am seeing ever since from various parties to the other. And now with this June uh, summit, that it is finally something like that. It also reminds me of the Consortium for Belize and Development Formation in 1985, in which my organization, Breda, was very pivotal in setting up when Dr. Eddie Lang came and brought where Belizeans came from all over the diaspora and at home. And as Philip Golson was saying, when government is willing. Now, what is really important to point out about the summit is that while the diaspora is getting together in this unprecedented show of solidarity, and we're excited about that, there's going to be a very interesting thing taking place over those couple of days because the government of Belize appears that they want to get to Southern California and on we have major ministries, ministers and uh, public servants going in March to Marriott Hotel to provide services and to be a part of the summit. There is a Ministry of Diaspora. We know that the Ministry of Natural Resources is going to be there. The Ministry of Immigration is going to be there. And that features a land clinic as well as there's going to be opportunity for Belizeans in the diaspora to clarify land issues. But the Immigration Department is going to be there to work out citizenship and passports for those who might not have resolved those issues as yet. But the question we asked Aria, who of course is one of the organizers, that's Aria Lightfoot, who also is a host of the Neighbor String Connections, is, well, is this overkill? Is it the government just to try one day belly full? Or is this way past due? I think that it's about time um, because when you have a group of people that's contributing 10%, of Belize's GDP, as was told to us by one of the same ministers. That's significant, um, but forget the money part of it. You know, um, the reality is that Belizeans want services and because we are still a growing, developing country, many times going through to Belize, trying to access a land service or immigration, people don't have time to stand in line. Um, and so, the idea of them coming and addressing and providing these services. These are things people want. These are things that benefit Belize, even tax wise. If you get people to own land, to buy their passport and to be actively uh, vested in Belize, it contributes to the economic growth. Now, when we say the Belize diaspora, of course, we're talking about Belizeans who live abroad and uh, the relationship between Belizeans who live abroad and those who live at home here has always been what you'd call sour sweet. It's sweet, we love them, but then 
we have tensions at times, misunderstanding sometimes. And what we want to know is, well, now that the diaspora is getting together in this act of solidarity, this act of unity, what should Belizeans at home think of it? Should they be concerned? Should they be involved? Should they be supportive? And if they are to be supportive, why should they be supportive? We put this question to Avi and see what she has to say on this. Why should somebody living in Belize back home who's maybe never been abroad, maybe been turned down for getting a visa multiple times, uh, where states got to do with me or where everybody else in the rest of the world got to do with me? Like, why should it be of concern? Why should they be interested? Why should they be support about the fact that reasons abroad, living in diaspora, quote unquote, are coming together in a summit? So let's reverse it. Let's look at the U.S. in Belize. Um, recently, we had some dispute with ASR, a, with the sugar industry. You had a U.S. senator that lobbied um, on behalf of them because they're an American company. Um, likewise, you see Americans go to Belize and the U.S. Embassy offers services for Americans that are in Belize. Simple services that you might not even consider. These are things that if Belizeans can use that same power for even a senator or, for example, when people are sick um, and they're able to give them medical care, which a lot of Belizeans have done, by the way. Um, we, they work within certain environments and certain fields that they can create that network. Um, during the pandemic, I know of one pastor in California, uh, Pastor Rose Banner, I believe her name is. She was taking care of an entire village sending down food so that people did not become food insecure. Uh, a lot of people did that during the pandemic with no, no type of, you need for give me recognition, you need to pay me. It's this navel string connection that Belizeans have with their, their home base. So it's going to be a very patriotic time in the month of June, kind of like beating September to the punch. We're going to be waving a little bit of Belizean flags coming up in the next couple of days in Los Angeles, California. It is the first ever Belize Diaspora Summit. We want you to tune in to us. This is XTV and we are going to continue these little previews, these little conversations so that you get primed, so you get motivated. And of course, if you are living abroad, we hope that you're making last minute plans if you've not done so before. If you're at home and you can't make it, then we want you to tune in to us because we will be covering this history making event.